Thank you. Well, we've had a mass exodus because I'm competing with Niall this morning, uh, this afternoon, uh, but that's all right. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be sharing a bit about what it's like to maintain a PhosphorG library. So we're here at a conference and we're hearing lots about how to use them, um, the cool things that we can do with them, um, but what it's like being on the other side, the guy that um, deals with some of the stuff coming in. Um, so the project that I'm involved in is called TurfJS. It's a JavaScript library. Um, it has about 150 different modules uh, for doing different spatial analyses. So things like clipping, buffering, that sort of thing. Um, and it's also designed to uh, make working with the GeoJSON format a bit easier. So it's got things like iterating over features and stuff like that. Uh, its primary target is for in the browser as well as Node.js. Um, and it's downloaded tens of thousands of times a week. Um, because we ship it as individual um, packages, so each uh, module can get used uh, separately, uh, it's hard to know exactly how many times it's downloaded. Um, here you can see something fancy that um, someone out there in web world made, um, sort of doing a line of sight analyses um, around somewhere. So a bit about um, TurfJS and who's behind it. Um, so it was started in about 2014 um, by some guys from Mapbox. Um, you can see here a tweet from um, the initial fanfare, I guess. Um, they got slammed for that tweet <laughs> in the comments. Uh, didn't go down particularly well. Um, but at its peak, Mapbox probably had three or four staff working um, on and off on turf. But over the couple of years after that, um, that slowly declined. Mapbox's priorities shifted elsewhere, and so those staff um, were no longer involved in it, and it pretty much became a community-owned um, project. So for the past two to three years, there's been myself and two other guys uh, involved in maintaining the project. Um, we've all been involved in it in our spare time. Um, yep, I've not had a job where um, people have asked me to work on turf. So it's once the kids are in bed and at 10 o'clock at night. So why I initially got involved in TERF, um, I was still a relatively new dev, and so I thought, I'll get involved with some people that know some stuff about coding. Um, that seemed like a good thing to do. Um, I also had this itch, so Paul was talking earlier about the uh, wanting to scratch that itch. I wanted to know what happens under the hood of spatial analyses, what makes them work. I'd come from a world of clicking buttons in ArcMap, um, and so I wanted to know what was going on with those things. I also had used lots of open source software, so things like QGIS, GDAL um, were part of my toolkit um, as a GIS analyst type person, and so I wanted to contribute something back, and so this looked like a project that I could get involved in um, and provide something back with. And so over the years, the sorts of things I've done, um, docs have been sort of my baby. They're the thing I've cared nicely about. I had this idea, like Paul mentioned, if we make them look shiny, maybe that'll help attract people. Um, that didn't particularly work so well. Um, I've also written modules from scratch. So things like polygon smoothing um, is actually surprisingly fun and relatively easy. I think that module's like 100 lines long. Um, finding polygon tangents. Um, we have a steady stream of bugs that get reported through GitHub um, for things that are broken, and so someone needs to take a look at that, um, as well as support. You'd be amazed at the number of people that come to a library that don't particularly know how to write JavaScript, but they think that this is something that will help them. And so we get roped into providing a bit of support. And in terms of stuff that I've learned along the way, um, it's been heaps. So I studied environmental science at university. So I knew about trees. Um, I didn't come from the world of computer programming, though. And so understanding tree structures for storing data, uh, understanding things like spatial indices, um, I had no idea what those things were. Sweep lines never crossed my mind. Um, 
And so being involved in the turf project has exposed all these things um, to me. I've also learnt lots more about testing libraries than what I do. So a lot of my work has been in sort of front-end web development stuff. Um, and so being involved in more of a data processing library, I've learnt um, a lot more about uh, the testing suites that are out there in the JavaScript world. I've also learned a lot about packaging and distributing JavaScript libraries. So packaging and distributing a single library that does one thing is quite easy. But because of the modular nature of Turf, we actually want to distribute 150 things. And so working out how to do that efficiently is actually not as simple as it seems. So initially, there was many repositories for Turf. Um, and they were all packaged individually, and it was horrible. Uh, we then moved to everything into a single repository and using a thing called Learner.js to publish them all out separately. Um, and most recently, we've been dabbling with a thing called uh, well, ES6 modules, which are a new standard for JavaScript, um, and seeing how that plays. And it turns out it doesn't play very nicely. <laughs> but I guess in terms of the unexpected challenges, so the technical side, I've learned heaps. It's been great fun. Uh, but the unexpected challenge has been around the people and project management side. So I kind of naively thought we'd just be this bunch of happy nerds all perfectly on the same page, uh, doing the same thing, all working in this cohesive direction. And instead, it's probably been a little bit more like these cowboys attempting to herd the cats. So we've got these individual developers. We're all in different countries. We've never really met each other. We've all got different ideas and priorities. Um, and so it hasn't quite been as simple as we might have liked. So I think there's a few things that have contributed to that, um, looking back at it now. Um, so firstly, the code base itself. Uh, because Turf aims to be modular, uh, we have like a, a buffer module. Um, they're each relatively standalone. It's made it easy for contributors to pop in and out. Um, if Turf doesn't do something that I want it to do, someone could submit a pull request that tackles just that single bit and then be gone again. Um, converting that person who's a one-off contributor into someone who's interested in maintaining the project hasn't necessarily been particularly easy. Um, and yeah, our code base has kind of supported that. You didn't need to know everything about Turf to contribute to Turf. Communication's also been the other big one. We're developers, and so we're used to working in GitHub. We use issues in GitHub. Um, but talking about things that are more sensitive, that um, where we have disagreements between contributors, GitHub issues isn't particularly suitable for that. And so being able to uh, work out how to con uh, communicate with the other contributors on the team has been tricky. So some people have Twitter accounts, some people don't. Some people use Slack, other people don't. And so we've never really found a good way to actually communicate um, amongst ourselves in a way that works for everybody. And related to that, I think, is probably the bigger issue of governance. Um, how is it that we manage this project where these couple of guys from different countries um, there is no overarching structure at the moment. Um, there is no concept of what we do when we disagree. Um, and so all that's kind of led to a situation that we're currently in where I'm not entirely sure that I signed up for this. So what happened earlier this year was one of our main contributors, the guy that looked after the packaging and distributing, actually just kind of disappeared. He, um, stopped replying to issues on GitHub. He stopped publishing code. And suddenly, I was kind of the next in line. And I got handed this baby that I wasn't necessarily <laughs> sure I wanted to hold. Um, and so it's been challenging working through where we take the project from here um, as it stands. And so one of the things I'm most excited to be a Phosphor-G about is thinking through how we can better manage TurfJS as a project. Um, there's all these other established PhosphorG projects, um, QGIS, PostGIS, JSTS, uh, JTS. Um, and so what are some of the things that we can pick up about how we manage a software project better? 
Um, is it things like a project steering committee? Uh, would OSGO participation be beneficial? There's lots of options um, that we need to learn from, I think. The other thing I found was once you start poking in under the hood is that geospatial analysis libraries are actually really limited. And this is something that um, Paul was touching on earlier. So if you look at the ecosystem, um, everything is pretty much derived from JTS and Geos. Um, everything's a port of a port of a port of something. Um, and Turf kind of fits into that category, kind of not. So at the moment, um, Paul said Turf kind of hooks into that ecosystem a little bit, but it's also quite different. Because we're aiming for browser code, um, we don't, uh, we want to be as small and modular as possible. So we do have currently some dependencies on JSTS, um, but we've been trying to get rid of that for years and the latest version 7 alpha branch um, actually does away with that, which I can explain a bit more. And so because Turf is focused on the browser, it tries to be unique from these other libraries. We want to be as small as possible. We don't want web apps to be bloated. And so that's why we kind of try to be different from the rest of the ecosystem. And at the moment, JavaScript is supposedly eating the world. Like there's a bazillion competing JavaScript libraries for everything, except pretty much for spatial analysis. There's nothing else that's really come to the fore um, over the past few years. And so I think there is still a need there. People still need something like TurfJS if they want to be able to do geospatial analysis in the browser. But I think we also, with that, we need to be realistic. So if the browser is going to be one of our targets and GeoJSON is going to be the format, then I think there are limitations that we need to kind of accept. It means that we need to keep our scope kind of constrained. We need to do things that make sense to do in a browser. And it also means performance-wise, we need to be sensible. We can't expect something like TurfJS running single-threaded JavaScript to compete with a PostGIS or a QGIS. And so the role of something like Turf is actually just another part of the toolkit that you guys can use and pick up where it makes sense, though. So in my daily workflow, I'll use PostGIS, I'll use QGIS. I don't actually use Turf that terribly often, but I think it is a great piece to have available within the broader geospatial um, toolkit. That said, the web is a constantly changing place. We've seen that with JavaScript over the past few years. Um, there's fancy new things. Uh, this thing called WebAssembly is coming along. Um, supposedly, that'll allow us to get C code um, running in browsers. And so, who knows? Maybe we will rewrite all the things. I don't know. And so I think if I was to kind of summarize my experience with a project like TurfJS, it's kind of been a bit of a roller coaster. There's been some really high points. The, the technical side, that's why I kind of got involved. I've learned so much. It's been incredible. But then there's also been some really hard parts. What do you do when the company that kind of started the library pulls back and doesn't act in a committed way anymore? What do you do when one of your core contributors decides that cryptocurrency is more interesting than <laughs> other stuff? Um, and so, yeah, it's been a bit of a roller coaster. Um, and kind of thinking about it while I was sitting in my ro room last night, I was thinking about Phosphor-G and sort of a slogan came to mind is that it takes more than technical know-how. And I was kind of equating it to the conference. And I reckon if I was the organizers, probably the last problem I would have had was finding people to talk about technical content. That's kind of what we're all comfortable doing. But it's all that other stuff that goes along with organizing a conference that's hard. What happens when the fire alarm goes off <laughs> like <laughs> 10 minutes into your session? Um, yeah. So that's my bit about TurfJS. Um, happy to take questions. You'll notice that our website isn't HTTPS because that's the domain name is with some other person that is no longer contactable. <laughs> <laughs> the challenges you have to deal with. So. Fantastic. Thank you very much.
I'm not an expert in this, but it seems to me that GEOS and JTS are nowhere near modular. And the thing I really learned is that they decompose to edge graphs or triangle graphs to do their tasks, and that's one of the modules that I really need. And I think that would be super powerful. Yeah, so that's one of the things we found with the JSTS port of um, JTS, the JavaScript port, was that it was really hard to unbundle anything. And so something like three-fifths of the turf code base is um, the JSTS dependency, which we were using for a single buffer <laughs> module. Um, yep, so that's one of the things you would need to explore if we went down that route. Is there any, um, version 7 you mentioned, is that in pipeline soon? Is there an expectation date or is that probably too much pressure? To do no, that so it is published to an alpha version on NPM. Um, but what we've found is that the um, shaking of the ES6 modules doesn't work particularly nicely. Um, I have one more question, if I may. You mentioned the diversity of the team, that it's across the whole world. And so I wanted to ask also in terms of diversity of the world, is it just white, middle-aged, sorry, uh, male, or, or, uh, <laughs> <laughs> or almost? Uh, or or <laughs> do you, are you more diverse than that? Ah, uh, look, I think we're young, white, yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, male. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> no, yeah, we are all from, I guess, that sort of background. Um, yeah, all professional guys. Um, yep. All right. Well, there's something to work with. All right. Thank you very much. Oh.